Dr. Pesto. Thank you very much for the <coughs> excuse me. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. I am a 20-year college professor. I have um, developed curriculum for states like Texas. Over the last six months, we've me and the organizations that I represent, we've speak, spoken six different six different counties in the state and 22 different states across the union about Common Core. Um, I can attest to a couple of things, having heard the testimony today. Uh, the first thing is, is that the university professors have not been consulted on this. The people who are going to be teaching these students moving forward have not been given a voice in this. And uh, there was a lot of consternation among the professors I've talked about, my colleagues in, in, in different states as well, about these standards being put together without any input from us. I think Dr. Stotsky was right about that. The other thing I learned a little bit today uh, as an English professor is I thought I knew the definition of rigorous. Um, we seem to be getting really radically competing definitions of what rigor is. Um, I also agree, I'm going to tell you with Dr. Stotsky, having seen what I've seen. One of the things that I've done as a university professor and wondering why, by the time Wisconsin uh, kids get to me at college, they are in so many instances unprepared in reading and math. I'm a reading person. Uh, my kids don't read very well and they get worse at it every year. I volunteered to teach uh, for two years, ending in May, in a local Oshkosh high school where I taught subjects like reading. And interestingly, some of the common core standards had already been introduced in those high school, that high school, and some of those kids followed me to UW Oshkosh where I saw them compared to other kids in my freshman classes. And the way they had been trained left them woefully deficient. Even by Wisconsin's, as Dr. Stotsky points out, I think a lot of people have pointed out on both sides of the issues, Wisconsin standards could certainly be better. But even by the general standards of Wisconsin, these kids who went through the, that type of curriculum did much more poorly. A couple of things also I'd like to point out. One of the things that I'd like to just mention today, and, and sort of keeping my remarks truncated, is I do think it's important to remind everybody again how we got into this position, why we are here right now. And let me ask, start with a hypothetical. What if it was, instead of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, what if it was the Koch brothers, or some other <laughs> radical right-wing organization who donated upwards of $225 billion to unaccountable groups to put these standards together? And what if that money went to fund a relatively small and insular group of lobbyists to come up with a curriculum? And what if a very conservative president created a program whereby states were promised tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to accept Common Core sight unseen simply by taking the money on the virtue of accepting standards that had not been produced yet simply on virtue of taking that money. I have to believe, because I know I would. I would be as angry about it as I am now. And I'd like to think that the rest of us would be too. And then the fact that these were never voted on. Dr. Stotsky's right. These have never been means tested. They have never been voted on, not by Congress, not by the Senate, not by the Department of Education, by no local governors voted on them, no state school boards, no local school boards, very few teachers. You saw what Dr. Stotsky told you. There were two content specialists on the validation committee, two, and both of them voted no, one in English language arts and one in mathematics, Dr. James Milgram, who is going to be able to address the committee, hopefully, in Eau Claire next week. You'll hear from both of them, God willing. The two content standards uh, experts recruited by people who wanted to see Common Core validated, they voted no. You've already heard testimony about how little actual high school teacher input has been incorporated in these standards. Let me give you one more hypothetical. This business about we've got invested too much to back out now. How many of our public school teachers would love to have backed out of No Child Left Behind one year after it started in 2003. I'll bet you the number's at 100%. If you ask our high school teachers and our elementary school teachers, the teachers who had to suffer under No Child Left Behind, if you ask them if they could have opted out after tens of millions of dollars had been spent, I'll bet you they all would have said yes. And we would have been a lot farther along now, a lot better off now not having spent that money. Now we're creating the wheel again. And one of the things that's so frustrating about this discussion, this endless wheel discussion we keep having, is, is that those aspects of No Child Left Behind, that so many of our hardworking teachers justly despise, are radically there in Common Core. Hardcore standards, one-size-fits-all education, a system that's based on nationalized testing, all this is part of Common Core on steroids. 
And so somehow the idea that we're all so eager to get this waiver from No Child Left Behind, and we are going to reincorporate some of the worst aspects of it in Common Core and spend billions and billions more. This idea that if indeed the committee, the state of Wisconsin finds, that there's problems with this, and it seems we have had so much evidence that there are problems with this, problems with implementation, problems with rollout, problems with funding, right? problems with the definition of the word rigor. If we decide, wisely I think, to halt this, even if it's only temporarily, if we decide to halt this, you can always pick it up again. You know, one of the nice thing about, things about Wisconsin school standards is they're not perfect, but they're better than a lot of the states that are doing much worse than us. Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, we can actually have the opportunity to continue to work on our own standards and watch what some of these other states do. And if it's great, I'll come back and tell you I was wrong. And then we can adopt them. And we can learn from the mistakes of those states who've implemented them. Let me give you a list here. Alabama, Alaska, Colorado, Kansas, Indiana, Florida, Georgia, Idaho, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, Maine, Nebraska, North and South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, and Virginia. Those are the states that have withdrawn completely or in part from Common Core over the last eight months. That does not include eight other states with legislation pending to back out of some or all of it. And that doesn't even include a, a state like Wisconsin, who now is seriously considering this. There is so many things to be concerned about here. What is this rush? One of the interesting things about our, our situation in Wisconsin here, uh, our friends from the DPI who testified to lead us off today, the two words that kept sticking with me were community and then final implementation. One of our uh, guests from the DPI said, as we near final implementation of Common Core, think about that. Think about what's going on in these hearings. And the DPI's perspective is, is that this is pretty much finalized now. That should shock you. How does community fit into that when this is only our second hearing? When the state of Wisconsin, we had to fight tooth and nail to get these hearings. And we're so grateful that the committees agreed to chair them and to sit them with them for us. But they're here now. And now we're having them. Now it's finalized. Where is the community? Dr. Scott Dotsky pointed out to you, I think very convincingly, how few high school teachers, how few actually, of the actual educators who are going to have to implement this curriculum, how few of them actually were consulted on this. And how none of the professoriate who's going to have to teach those kids when they graduate, none of us were consulted on it either. Right? But it's about community. As one of the uh, representatives pointed out in his own district, right? When, I, when you sat on that committee, you, your, your school boys didn't do any of this stuff. This stuff is all, it really is decided by one man. Superintendent Tony Evers decided we're going to take this. And based on his testimony in Madison two weeks ago, he had kind of a difficult time act, ask, answering really basic questions about benchmarking. We've heard that again too, right? We heard it from our last presenters as well, who are doing the wonderful work in the Fond du Lac schools. Internationally benchmarked. We now know that doesn't mean anything. Not when it comes to Common Core. These are serious problems. Bill Gates, the man who funded Common Core to the tune of a quarter billion dollars, said the following in an interview one month ago. The interview is in the Washington Post on September 13th. Bill Gates said, quote, it would be great if our education stuff worked, but we won't know that for probably a decade. If they're spending a quarter of a billion dollars to create them, and upwards of 16 billion initially to begin to implement them nationally, what do you think it's going to cost in 10 years when we decide whether they work or not? That's Bill Gates. How about Jason Zimba, who is the singular creator of the math standards? They're his pride and joy. He put them together. <clears throat> How about what Jason Zimba said in an interview in February this year? He said, quote, with so many states now working toward the same goals, there should be an opportunity to gather more research data than we have been able to. The assessment consortia can also greatly enlarge our knowledge base about what does and doesn't matter for post-secondary success. So in the best view of this, he said, I think we are taking the first halting steps toward a functioning feedback loop with student achievement at its center. 
This is the man who created the math standard. We are only now beginning, after implementing it, to begin to take those first few tentative steps to understanding if it's going to work. It has never been tested. It has never been tried. And even those schools, those international schools they talk about, places like Hong Kong and Singapore, I mean, this is just flawed scientific experimentation. What do the homogeneous, incredibly small population bases of Hong Kong and Singapore, how do they relate to a country of 310 million with a huge socioeconomic disparity, with huge racial and economic differences, family differences? There's all the incidences of divorce and single mother families in places like Singapore and Hong Kong are incredibly small. How does any of that so-called benchmarking, and I think Dr. Stotsky is probably right, what they mean by benchmarking is just reading the standards and putting them in a drawer. Because there's not a shred of evidence anyone's offered you anywhere, despite repeated calls for it, that shows that it's ever been done. And even our DPI folks today who work hard, I know it. But their response to this was, we've got to go back through our notes. Questions that Representative Knudsen had asked them at the last session. We've got to go back through the notes. You know, at some point, the people of Wisconsin, and another senator, another congressperson pointed this out too. There has been the suggestion, why are we having this here? There has been the suggestion, why are we wasting people's time? This is a done deal, right? It's staggering. It's absolutely staggering. The people of Wisconsin are not paranoid. They are awake. This is their kids. Look, and, and this, this, this canard that somehow if you oppose these standards, you oppose standards? That is utter sheer nonsense. The idea that somehow if you don't want this particular set of standards, you want your kids to be standardless, it doesn't make any sense. And a word or two, and I'm really foreshortening this, but a word or two about exemplar texts and all this big, I love the fact, it was almost like a, a Clinton press release, uh, trying to parse, right, and I know it's complicated language, but trying to parse out what exactly an exemplar text is and how it is and it isn't and all the things that it's supposed to do, it's really simply common sense, right? Exemplar texts are texts that the Common Core has vetted in some way and said are acceptable. And here's where it gets so insidious. The, and the two groups, the two small groups that own the copyright for Common Core, they're not accountable to anybody. They're not accountable to the Secretary of Education, not accountable to Congress, the President. They're not, account they're not accountable to anybody. We have the curriculum, the standards for every single public school kid in this country in the possession of a very small group of people and copyrighted and underwritten by huge, big, corporate donors. How is that acceptable? Talk about process, right? It's shocking when you think about it. And about those exemplar texts. You know what it is that's so insidious about it? Because of who owns the copyright? Not the federal government. Technically not the federal government. Even though the federal government has been writing curriculum to augment Common Core for the last four years. Even though Race to the Top, by definition, was a federal program. And his only stipulation for giving out taxpayer money was you accept them when they get published, right? I mean, we, we see this. This isn't good for anybody. These exemplar texts. Here's what's insidious about them. All the textbook publishers, are, as was pointed out, are radically moving to Common Core. They are incorporating excerpts and complete texts of those works in their textbooks. And I get it. Right? State of Wisconsin teachers will be able to buy their own textbooks. If you've ever been involved with a school, do you honestly believe that every teacher is going to be able, going to be, there's going to be money for every teacher to buy his or her own set of books? It never, ever happens that way. Inevitably, what happens is, is that schools buy conglomerate textbooks. They buy a lot of a textbook because it's cheaper. And teachers are required to use those books. They may be able to pick and choose in those books, but those books are radically becoming 100% Common Core exemplar texts. So yeah, technically, state of Wisconsin schools don't have to use exemplar texts. But all the books they're going to buy are going to have them. Does anybody honestly believe that each individual teacher is going to be able to buy their own textbook? How do you get away from this? We had an interesting little excerpt read, and one of our uh, uh, representatives here read, read another one. I could read you two dozen. How about the bluest eye? A lot of you have heard of that. It's in Wisconsin schools already. That's the thing. You mentioned Arizona. We have all sorts of examples of these kinds of readings popping up in textbooks in Wisconsin classrooms now. And one more thing about the textbooks. Part of my responsibilities, I've looked at over 100 English language arts common core textbooks. I've looked at them. I've gone through them. It's exactly the kind of stuff 
that's on the exam. It's all, 99% of it are these exemplar tests. And it's even worse than that in the sense that every single, single exemplar test has copious marginal notes, has remarkably detailed question and answer stuff at the back of the book, has an incredibly elaborate testing scheme at the back. The idea that our teachers are going to even feel comfortable. And the other thing, I'm going to close with this. We have seen in the states that I've been to, over and over and over again, teachers saying exactly that. Hey, you gotta keep fighting this fight because I can't say it. I even had a superintendent in one school, north of Green Bay, tell me, we're, we were told flat out, do not fight this. Either get on board or stay quiet. There's a reason. You see what a diverse response to Common Core people have. There's a reason teachers are very nervous about speaking out about this. I understand there's a, there's a lot of benefits to speaking out for it, particularly with the higher up you go in the educational administration. There's a lot of potential grief for speaking out against it. And that's what I'd like to close with. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for the doctor before he scampers away? It's not a really nice. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You mentioned that early in your testimony that you represent some organizations. Could you just tell us about who you represent? Absolutely. I am a university professor for the University of Wisconsin, and I am an academic director for an online homeschool who put the curriculum together. That, and then it's that capacity that I've been exposed to lots and lots of textbooks. Actually, we have struggled to find textbooks that aren't Common Core, and particularly in language arts, you almost you can't find it. So that's that's my capacity and how I know these things. You're not speaking on behalf of those organizations? Uh, I, well, I'm speaking for myself as a concerned citizen, I would say. Yeah, the University of Wisconsin certainly hasn't conditioned me to come and speak to you. Representative Holt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was a little confused during part of your testimony in that you said the problem with Common Core was that it was not, there was no federal sanction of it or it wasn't voted on by any Congress, any of those sources, are you then implying that that's what we need? No, what I'm saying is, first of all, part of the problem with Common Core is this. Part of the problem is, is that the entire federal education structure has been writing, has been promoting this, writing curriculum to supplement it. The federal government has been effectively bribing states to take it sight unseen. And, and so once you adopt, you take the money, you got Common Core. Think about what this means for Wisconsin. We took some Common Core money. Uh, Secretary Evers accepted Common Core, right? And that's it. Now it is something that we don't have, we have to go to extra linear means to get rid of it. It's something that was imposed on us. We didn't ask for it. He took it. And so consequently, simply by virtue of this race to the top scheme, all these 45 states have to go to extreme lengths to remove it. Right? I mean, that doesn't strike me as fair legislative process. And yet, and yet, Representative, you see that the federal government, by doing that, is in, absolutely involved in the. So what they've done is they've completely sanctioned it federally, but have covered their tracks with this little Potemkin group that takes responsibility for it. The idea that this, why is Arnie Duncan, as early as 2010, going out and giving speeches in favor of Common Core? It seems to me that. Um, it's a bait and switch. We've seen this so often from God. Is there a chance that he's doing it because it's good? <laughs> I'm sure there's a, there's a lot of chance. Absolutely. Yeah. Do I, if you're asking me, do I think Arnie Duncan believes in it? I would say, knowing Arnie Duncan, I think he absolutely believes. Um, I have students in my district who attend as many as 15 different school districts. I have been inquiring. And I have yet to find anyone, teacher or administrator, who doesn't believe the Common Core State Standards are good for their students, good for the state of Wisconsin. What am I to do with that information? Assume that they don't know what they're talking about? I'm not asking you to assume anything. I'm telling you what I know. And I would go one step further and say, I could give you, if they would let me, two dozen names of teachers who don't. But they don't feel they can tell you that. Teachers in my district. I don't know what district you represent. The 80s. I, I don't know. Well, I, I rely on them to guide me, and so far, um, they would disagree with me. 
Not all of them would. Not all of them would. The ones you talk to would. 